On Thursday night, The Flash brings the comic book character to television as the suited crime fighter with super speed. Also new to Thursday's lineup, The Hammersmith. And Captain Marvel or one of the other comic book superheroes. They've been on the side of the law and order since the 40s, and comic books have been on the rise ever since. And that is today's Inside Story. America's love affair with a comic book is bigger now than ever before, and it's definitely not just for kids. As much as $80,000 has been paid for one comic book, and Hollywood is picking up on that cue in the movies. You're under arrest. Dick Tracy is the latest film to have its origins in a comic book. Warren Beatty based his character on what attracted him to read Dick Tracy as a child. Dick Tracy makes me nostalgic. It makes me think about when I was a kid. Everything was very clear in Dick Tracy. What was good was clear, what was bad was clear. Dick Tracy's good. What are you? I'm Batman. Batman is the biggest success story so far. The film made more than any other last year with characters that have been around for 50 years. Now a film called Captain America, based on the comic book character, is set to be released later this year. And a new TV series based on The Flash is on the CBS schedule for fall. <laughs> comic book collecting is at an all-time high. Comic shops are springing up around the country, while conventions attract more and more crowds, kids and adults. The same kids who used to hide comics from parents and teachers are now grown up and collecting them. It's not only fun, it's an investment. Particularly ones we specialize in are kind of like blue chip stocks. They're very solid investments. They always go up about 10% a year or better. I hear all the time that uh, parents coming in wanting to put books away for, their, for the students for college. A lot of people like the idea that comic books could be an investment, not unlike coins and stamps. They're cool. And someday I know that comic books will be worth something. Captain America Comics, number one, 1941. First appearance of Captain America. Stephen Fischler has been collecting comics for most of his 23 years. He has his own business buying and selling the books, and he has acquired some of the most valued and rare comic books in existence. This is the first appearance of Batman. A book like this would bring upwards of eighty to $90,000 in perfect condition. A uh, book like this, which is Action Comics 1, is the first Superman. This is uh, considered to be uh, about the same price range as the Detective 27, about eighty to 90000 in perfect condition. Larry Doucet has been a collector of Dick Tracy comic books and memorabilia since he was 10 years old. He thinks the movie will only enhance the value of his collection. There are people who are trying to capitalize on the movie and speculate on the movie, and the price of these, some of these things are becoming more than they were last year by a substantial amount. There are celebrities who collect comic books. Mark Hamill, better known as Luke Skywalker, sees collecting as a hobby he can enjoy with his children. Quite a different attitude than when he was a child. I think it had the same illicit allure that rock and roll had, because it was, it was tolerated in my household but looked down upon as, you know, for feeble-minded, if you couldn't read regular books. But that's one of the things I think helped me want to read. The current rage in comic books are those heroes in the half-shell, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, spurred on by a successful movie. But will the turtles be something to value 50 years from now? Batman's like forever, you know? He yeah. keeps going up and down, but turtles are just going to go down. It's not something you want to treasure the way you treasure a Batman or a Superman or a Flash. Or a... a title is a title is a title, as they say. Last year, publishers grossed $400 million selling comic books under approximately...